What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another great episode of DJ Reacts. We got some good stuff for you tonight, so I hope you guys are feeling it. Let me know in the comments what you think. I always love to interact with you guys. Been getting some great comments lately, so I truly appreciate every last one of you from the heart that's been actually communicating with me, putting your stuff down in the comments. Also, as a disclaimer, don't believe anything you see in these videos. Don't believe anything that I say. Do your own research. This is for entertainment purposes only. And let's get into the content. Can somebody tell me what's going on in Texas? First, we have another chemical fire. And with this chemical fire, they're now telling people to turn their AC systems off so the chemicals do not get inside their house. And they said if you were five miles around this area right here, Shepherd, Texas, you are now under a warning for air quality. But oh, it gets better. See, Texas also had three back-to-back -back earthquakes in Pecos, Texas. The largest one being a 5.2 earthquake. And this is not the first time Texas they had earthquake, but what I am saying is the tectonic plate activity is starting to uh what would you call it oh yeah get more active and then we got another chemical fire yeah the lone star state had an eventful day today let me know what y'all think about what's going on in texas in the comments like and follow for more wisdom and stay tuned Kiss i like this kid uh i like that he's trying to stay up on things but it's very common for most places to have minor earthquakes throughout the u.s uh, usually smaller earthquakes <clears throat> so they're registered between like a two and a four on the richter scale it's extremely common most people don't even know it happens uh in some states they happen 10 to 20 times a day well they used to i don't that's current i haven't looked at years but that's a pretty common thing um uh, 5.2 yeah but also remember that there's a lot of stuff going on out there where they're causing these earthquakes and i wouldn't say it was tectonic plates becoming more active tectonic plate shift is a huge or isn't just happen randomly but there are a lot of human caused things that are causing earthquakes and, and that's been going on it's because when you get greed <clears throat> money they do not care what they have to destroy rather it's our environment you know uh our lifestyles of able to eat clean food and drink clean water and any of that stuff they don't care they will push it to the max and destroy whatever they have to whether it be forest that or you know, major forest that this whole planet relies on for oxygen you know uh, they'll destroy it all to get what they're going after so that's my uh two cents on it Oh. Holy fucking shit, guys. Oh. Holy fucking shit, guys. Yeah, yeah, and I check the method. They be asking us questions, harassing, arrest us. Saying we eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast, huh? Y'all eat pieces of shit. What's the basis? We ain't going nowhere but got suits and cases. A trunk full of coke, rental car from Avis. My mama used to say only Jesus could save us. Well, mama, I know I act the fool, but I'll be gone to November. I got packs to move. I hope. God, show me the way because the devil's trying to break me down. The only thing that I pray is that my feet don't fail me now And I don't think there's nothing I could do now to right my wrongs I wanna talk to God but I'm afraid cause we ain't spoken so long God 
God show me the way because the devil's trying to break me down. The only thing that I pray is that my feet don't fail me now. And I don't what do you guys think that is? I'm curious as to your opinions. What do you guys think that is? Uh, that's not the first time that I've seen something like that. That is the first time that I've seen a man with a cane specifically. There, there, mind you, there are six, from what I could find, six different viewpoints on this. And it might be Project Bluebeam, but when the cane hit the ground and the lightning struck through it, you know, that that just kind of hit a bit different for me. So I, I think that's real. I'm not positive, I, and I have no evidence. It's just a feeling I have. Uh... You know, the times we're in right now, it, it's, it's a really good time for those who are waking up, but it's a really bad time for those who are still asleep, or should I say still a sheep. So, you guys let me know in the comments what you think. I'm curious. I don't think that was in the Miami Mall. That that might have been what was in the Miami Mall. I hear people saying that they thought angels came out of that portal. You can obviously see when the portal expands, people are going up to it like, let's look at it. Let's look at it and talk. Now look, you're going to see these guys right here, <clears throat> right here, and someone over here coming up to the portal. Pay attention. So people are saying that those were angels that came out of that portal. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but angels do not use portals. They absolutely do not. At all. They move at the speed of thought. Not light, thought. Move at the speed of thought. My personal experience with them has been amazing. And even with a specific archangel. So... That's my personal experience. I cannot speak for anyone else. I hear a lot of stuff that is BS because I know from my own experience how they can appear, um, what forms they will appear in, and how they deliver messages. And I've had an ongoing relationship with a specific archangel most of my life. Uh, they don't use portals. I've never in my life seen a portal open up you know, in my house to speak to one. And I'm talking face to face. I'm not talking praying or anything like that. I'm talking face to face. So usually they'll come in a form that is, uh, that is comfortable for you because they're trying to convey a message to you they'll come in a form that's more comfortable for you. You know, even the little things like, in, in uh, here's something strange. So, you know, years ago, maybe three years ago, I was in a gas station. I was walking out, I held the door for a woman, 
and she just said something profound to me that she couldn't have known, but it wasn't her speaking to me. She had initially, just momentarily, had an angel speaking through that message needed to come to me and I was so thrown off by the message that I said I, I waited and when I was about to let go of the door I said wait what what and she goes what thank you for holding the door and I'm like no but what what did you just say she said, I, I didn't say anything thank you for holding the door and I could see the look in her face she had no idea what I was talking about so, you know, things like that happen a lot. Don't let this, excuse me, don't let this veer you off from truth. Because I think that's what they're trying to do. Or they're stupid and they're just making stupid guesses because they have no experience and they don't know what they're talking about. Either way, Angels do not use portals. Ever. Ever. Never had. Why would they? Hey, who's been paying attention to what's been happening in Germany? I guess better question is, who's missed it? Because not surprisingly, it's not getting very much coverage here. I guess they don't want anyone getting any ideas. You know what I mean? German farmers have been protesting against their government due to removal of tax benefits, specifically those that would end the tax break on their fuel and agricultural vehicles. This is amounting to a financial impact to the farmers of what they're saying is approximately 1 billion euro per year. And this is to help resolve a 17 billion euro deficit due to what the courts have ruled, what the German courts have ruled was unlawful spending of money by their government. So what's the government do? They go, oh, okay. Well, we'll just charge, we'll just tax the people to make up the difference because we don't know how to handle money. Man, does that sound familiar? And this has been their response. You know, recently as a couple of days ago, the German government has come back and said, okay, fine, fine. We will spread the tax impact over some years and allow the farming sector to get used to it. Well, this isn't acceptable to the farming community in Germany, and they are not backing down. They're going to continue their protests. Hey, who's been paying attention to what's... So I don't know if you noticed, but that was a truck spewing fecal matter on our Reichstag, our parliament building. Um, yeah, they're not happy about it, and understandably why, you know? We can't properly we can't properly govern, so we're going to make the people have to pay for our mistakes. And you're talking about you know a billion dollars a year, but there's a 17 billion dollar deficit. That's still a lot less than the U.S. deficit, but you should never make your own people pay for your mistakes because you can't govern. You know? And I know a lot of people had issue with Angela Merkel, you know, our prior chancellor. But I loved her. That woman was a beast, you know. She was a woman. She didn't put up with any shit. And she was there for her people. And she knew the right things to do. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, she made some mistakes. But in the long haul... You know, um, unlike puppeteering U.S., she's the actual chancellor. No one was her puppet master. So uh, I don't know where this is going to go. I think it's sad. I think it's ignorant. You know, and it's the first time I've seen Germany not support their people properly. But, you know, you have to think... When the whole Syrian thing happened, we took in more Syrians than any other country. Countries would take in 20 or 30,000 Syrians. We took in 1 million Syrian refugees. So the government promised them that 
if you have these little coupons, you could go to a hotel and you would have a place to stay for a while. And the government would pay the hotel. What started happening was the government wasn't paying the hotels. So the hotels were not honoring those coupons for those Syrian refugees. So guess who stepped up? We did. We did. The German people. We stepped up. We offered, and, and I know it was a it was a weird transition. You know, you have uh, you have Syrian men that are used to you know not having to worry about handouts or anything like that, but you've got German people that are in their twenties and thirties, and they're like, hey, we can offer you a place to stay and food to eat for three to four days. And we'll help you find someone else that can do the same. The German people stepped up. And, and that touches my heart. Because we didn't wait on the government. The government failed. We stepped up. And so there's a language barrier. There's a culture barrier. Because you're talking about, you know, Muslim men that are usually alpha in everything that they do. But now they're... They're having to humble themselves and take on, you know, what they're being given by German people, just regular people, you know? It's like, hey, I've got a couch, I've got a futon, I've got some extra food, I can feed you for about three or four days, you can stay here. Afterwards, you know, I'll, I'll help you find somewhere else to go. You know, that's how that ended up going. So, yeah, I, I have no, no faith in government at all. You see that I say it in a lot of my videos. What you don't want is to depend on your government because they can't even govern properly. Most countries, they cannot govern properly. You do not want to depend on your government. Not for anything like this. Not at all. And I would dare somebody tell me otherwise. I've lived in socialist countries. I was behind the Iron Curtain, Soviet Union, in 1988 to 1989. I was in Germany when the wall came down. I was there that night in 1989, you know, with my father. I was a child. So I've lived in these countries. I've seen forms of government work, but I've also seen them just completely be corrupt. So, and when I see little traits of that corruption here and there, I already know where it's going. You have to name it to claim it. So here's my definition of what wellness means to me. This is my definition, not yours, just an idea, because you're gonna be defining it for yourself. Wellness to me means all things in balance. And balance doesn't mean all things are equal or at peace at all time. Oh. Oh. Wrong shoes. You have to name it to claim it. So here's you have to name it to claim it. So here Yeah, I don't think that was accidental at all. You catch this orb right over her, and then she just face plants. Beautiful. You know? Oprah is probably, if I could list both hands, top 10 most evil, vindictive, sadist people on the planet, Oprah would be in my top three. And a lot of people might not have that perception because they're like, oh, well, you know, you, you get a car, you get a car, you get a blah, blah, blah. No, she's, and you all saw what she did with the whole Hawaii thing. And then buying up all of that property. And then all of these people whose houses were burned by infrared lasers. These were infrared. That's why you could not see them. And also remember, 
because they were infrared, and I can prove this, I have one of these lasers. So these lasers, just like uh, just like the sky absorbs blue, which is from the waters, which is why our sky is blue. Same thing with these lasers. The lasers cannot penetrate blue, just absorb it. So notice, Korea, North Korea started putting all of, they started changing all of their government buildings to blue roofs because the U.S. was using infrared lasers on each other. I have one of these lasers. And the funny thing is, I knew this a year ago. I didn't know this was going to happen, but I was trying to burn some paper and there was a big blue piece on it and you know, I could burn everything else, but the blue, it wouldn't do anything with. So, yeah, Oprah's wicked. If you like Oprah, I can't help you. But she has done so much damage. I mean, she is at the very top of a lot of things. But she's not one of the elites that you're thinking. She's not that high yet, but she's right under there. Why did it take me this long to realize that I'm actually not naturally built lazy? I'm literally just mineral deficient. I've been searching on TikTok and they said that if you feel tired and exhausted all the time, which is literally me, you're basically mineral deficient. And I kept seeing this supplement, it has this one. It's the Seamoss Black Seed Oil Ashwagandha and Ginga. And it's this one as well, the Shilajit, this black one. They said that these two things have every single mineral that your body needs. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's try it. Let's try it for two weeks and see if it actually makes a difference. Guys, when I tell you I'm a completely different person, like after taking this, it actually blows my mind. I have woken up. So let me pause this. So yeah, she's right. Uh, I have that exact bottle. I have both of them. Now, I also get my sea moss from St. Lucia, and I get it gelled in a jar, and that sea moss has 99% of the minerals the human body needs on a daily basis. So every morning, along with a lot of my supplements, I take a spoon of that. It's pretty much odorless and tasteless. There's a slight taste, but it, it, it would... It, it looks like you're just taking up a crushed, shredded jellyfish, you know. It's just, it goes in and out, you know, there's to it. But this specific bottle that she has, I also have. And uh, Shilaji is another one. And together, those have everything that your body needs as far as minerals. Because we don't get it from our water, you know. If you're out there going to buy uh, bottled water, you're drinking dead water. It has zero nutritional value. Zero, because they filter everything out. Now, what you need is what I have, which is a distiller. So, I take my water and I put it through a distiller. You know, I make about three to four gallons a day. And it also puts in the minerals body needs but i also add things to replenish my electrolytes it's a big thing but yeah mineral deficiency it's a huge thing and they want you to take a pill they want to prescribe you something for it it's not needed so don't fall for that please don't fall for that. because it's going to mess you up i have loved ones that have gotten messed up by it's not on you just take the right stuff. Woken up with energy every single day. And guys, I don't even nap, take like naps anymore. I used to take like 10 naps a day because I was that tired. I was that drained from doing nothing. But now the amount of energy I have is crazy. I even woke up yesterday at 5 a.m. Um, to do laundry, one. I cleaned my whole house, okay? And I went on that stepper machine for literally one hour straight. I really thought I was an athlete because why was I doing so much at once? Like, normally I'll be huffing and puffing after five minutes, but 
guys yesterday was actually crazy another thing that this has done like oh my god guys i used to get so bloated all the time i would literally look like seven months pregnant but now i can have templates of food and my belly will not expand like it stays flat snatch and toned who is eating tin plates of food tell me that why are you eating tin plates of food I don't know if she's saying that as an example or if she's being literal. But either way, you should not be eating tin plates of food. That's asinine. Why? There's no good reason you I don't care how good the food is, how natural it is. I make natural food all of the time, you know, but tin plates of food? I hope she's saying that just as like an example, just exaggerating it a bit to make you understand how good stuff is. The whole day, like having a flat belly after dinner and not having to feel so embarrassed that your belly is literally sticking out, it's just, it's a different type of feeling. Like whatever they put in this, I don't even know, but it's doing its thing. And it worked so quickly. Like guys, I saw all of these benefits in literally two days. From taking it. I took two capsules one in the morning one in the night and it was just doing its thing another thing oh my god guys if your boss and your co-workers stress you out from the minute you're at work to the minute that you get home like take these supplements I'm telling you something about it it gets rid of all that stress I don't have anxiety I literally my mood is up like I don't even have an attitude at work anymore. If you're that lazy person that wants to sit in bed all day, has no energy to do anything, you're stressed out all the time, you're moody as hell, this is the answer to everything. This will save your life. I'm not even kidding. Guys, try it for two weeks. Let me know your thoughts. You will not even recognize yourself. In this industry, what you must understand is, you know, um, when you do sell your soul, you are allowed to live forever and these people that are called youngins like i was had no idea that these people still live i don't get it last time we saw you diane simmons had just stabbed you in the back with a knife yeah how the hell did you come back to life well gentlemen sometimes being a big hollywood star has its advantages <laughs> Hey, is this guy somebody? Yeah, that's James Woods. We got a celebrity here. I repeat, this is not a normal dead person. This is a celebrity. Being a famous movie star entitled me to top-notch medical care, not available to the rest of society. My body was immediately taken to a Hollywood hospital where I was hooked up to a 17-year-old ingenue. Pray, haunt, kidnap, anything to stay on top and in accordance with hollywood law her life force was infused into me bringing me back from the dead so now we've conquered the art of exchanging spirits trading spirits you know take skin people and wear their faces to infiltrate the families and this this that and now as i promised we'll talk now more about david bowie and his influence let's bring in jack stephen he is director of fortune music it's, and it's actually fortress music fortress, fortress music yes. do beg I your know, pardon jack mind. first sum up how how you felt this morning when you when you heard this I, I was just saying earlier that i actually felt that part of me had died I actually felt that part of me had died I actually felt that part of me had died I mean, I have to say, that that's how much an influence he is, I think, to me and to thousands and millions of people around the world. Why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. In this if you're a Christian that can't deal with inconvenient truths, you have three seconds to scroll. I am warning you. One, two... Do you know what this is? Who these men are? Pause this video, write it in the comments. Tell me who you think these people are. See, this platform. He said pause it. Um, I haven't seen these videos, by the way. Let's cue them up because they look interesting. But that looks like Constantine to me. I think, uh, I'm not sure what he's going to say, but 
I know that Constantine is the emperor. He was playing both sides. So you had the pagans and the Christians. And Constantine was trying to basically play both sides and make them both get along. That's why we celebrate Christmas, you know, the Mass of Christ, the Anointed One on December 25th, even though December 25th is the winter solstice, and when Jesus was actually born in the spring. How do we know Jesus was born in the spring? Well, because uh, he was born in a manger. There were shepherds out there at night protecting their flock, walking their flock over sheep well that's the only time a year that sheep produce babies that's the only time only time only one time a year which is in the spring sheep have children so that's why you see these names that relate like christ is the sacrificial lamb the lamb of god Manger in the spring, the shepherds were out, her flock, all of these things. So it all coincides together. But let's see what he says. He might he might say something. I don't even didn't allow me to post my in detail video, so I gotta give you a quick three minute video. I'll be giving a more in depth deep dive tomorrow when I can get it up. I gotta take some things out so they'll allow me to post it. Here's the reality. The world has already ended. The white horsemen, all four horsemen, have already come. You are living in a post-apocalyptic future. And the Antichrist is the elites of the West, more specifically the Roman Empire. Right? The elites of the Roman Empire. Yeah. The Catholic Roman Church elites, not the Catholics within it, people. The elites. These people all have that spirit of the West. And I'm going to explain to you quickly exactly why and give you a more in-detail breakdown tomorrow. See, this man's name is Constantine. And this right here is the Council of Nicaea. He is the emperor of Rome or the old emperor of Rome. Now, let me put this in perspective for you. The Romans wiped out hunter-gatherers. They, they, they persecuted Christians for years. Jewish people, the Roman Catholic Church, I mean, they, you, you already know about the atrocities done with the Muslims, right? And the Arabs, right? What a lot of y'all don't know is that when the Jewish elites worked with the Roman elites to get Yahshua, because y'all don't even know his name, y'all call him Jesus, name's Yahshua, to get him murdered, to get him crucified, for years afterwards, for those of you who think the Roman, they didn't actually want to do it, they persecuted, right, the people who followed the teachings of Yahshua. Because at this time, it wasn't a religion. It was a spiritual practice. It was a philosophy. No one even agreed on exactly who Yahshua was at this time in early Christianity. Now, this is important. See, the Romans co-opted the entire religion and the entire practice and turned it into a religion and took over it and turned it from something that was about spirituality, about being one with God, about knowing that the kingdom of God is within you. And they flipped it and turned it into something about conquering. Now, if you don't believe me about Constantine, one of the main representations of the Antichrist energy, remember this, the white horseman comes looking, deceiving people, making people believe that he is Christ, coming in the name of Christ, looking pure, looking like he has the crown, but actually he's here to conquer. When this, remember, what changed the Romans? You got to think about this. They went from persecuting, murdering, killing, just doing the worst things to the Christians. What changed their minds? Well, according to Constantine, he had a vision. And in this vision, he saw the symbol of a cross. This is what he said. This is his words, not mine. And a voice told him, with this symbol, you shall conquer. Now, I don't have to do another breakdown, do I? About how the Roman... Now, that was something that Constantine claimed. Because he was catching a lot of flack from the people that followed Yeshua. So he was more in line with 
pagans, but now you have this new group that are all about following Yeshua, the Anointed One, Christ. And so he was trying to do things to bridge that gap. He was trying to please both sides without having any blood on his hands. So I just wanted to throw that in there. I didn't want you to think that Constantine was just like, oh, I saw this vision of a cross that says we will conquer. You know, that's what he claimed, but he never, he never detailed that anywhere. And Constantine wrote down so many things and elaborated on so many things. And with that, he didn't elaborate. That's something he said, and he wanted, you know, uh, followers of Christ or Yeshua to believe that. Excuse me. But it was never written down. He never truly claimed that. In church, conquered the entire planet, sanctioned and paid for colonialism, slavery, right? How they took over how, how 5% of the, the planet or 8% of the planet population took over 80% of the earth. Right? They come in the likeness, in the form, in the symbol of Christ, but really to conquer, to take, to take. That is the entire story of the Roman Empire. And they still live not only through the elites in the Roman church, that's why they're doing all that dark stuff, but they also live through the United States of America, who really is Rome today. And then they took all of the different people who spoke to Yahshua, who felt like they got a, a, a spiritual revelation from Yahshua, and they, this is the, now this is the Council of Carthage, they decided what would be canon and what wouldn't be. In other words, they would decide what stories you should believe about Yahshua, and what stories you shouldn't believe. And then they changed his name, and then they changed his image, so you're not even invoking, when you say the name, you don't, know, you, you don't even know how to invoke the name of your Savior, of your Messiah. You don't even know. That's true. So, uh... Look up the Borgias, the, the Borgias, I think it's B-O-R-G-I-A-S, so the Borgias, uh, father was one of the first popes of Rome, of the Vatican, and the Borgias were just a detrimental um, family to the Vatican, and so Vinci had a sexual relationship with one of Pope Borgia's sons. So what ended up happening was he made it to where Da Vinci drew his son's face on all of the fictions of Christ. And so before that, you, you can even see in the video I posted about you know, the Russians releasing that you know, Christ and all of his followers were black-looking, African, North African, Jordan, these areas. Uh, but he made that decree to deface all of what they knew Christ to look like, and he put his own son on, you know. So that's who you're looking at. And you can, you can read the book. I went to school for theology, so I, I understand all of this. But, yeah, there's a, there, there's a lot of treacherous things that they want you to think. But if you would just read and then compare, just like when you're talking about Semitic peoples. Semitic peoples are, you know, Haitian, Jordan, North African. They're not, you know, these Ashkenazis in uh, Russia and Germany. These are not those people. And they recognize it because now you have people waking up saying, hey, we are the true Israelites. And I've even seen video clips. And when I find another one, I, I will post it and discuss it. But I've seen them, black Israelites, go to a synagogue and say, hey, you stole our culture. 
We are the true Semitic peoples. We are Semites. We are the Semitic peoples because it's from this region and you guys don't exist in this region and they understood and they welcomed them with open arms but ask yourself why would someone want to steal someone else's identity especially a persecuted identity well because after a while you're going to get repaid for that persecution as long as you look a certain way like what the new semitic peoples not the true semitic peoples not the dark skinned ones lighter skinned ones and, and this is nothing new this is nothing new at all you can read your bible and see what god thinks about racism you know Look at Mo, uh, Mo, uh, Moses' brother. Obviously, his name was not Moses. Uh, from what I understand, Moses was like a last name. So his name could have been Tat Moses, Pa Moses, you know. But somehow in the transliteration, it got shortened down to Moses. But his brother married someone from a different tribe a different race and uh i can't remember who it was but they made fun of him for doing that and rejected him and and god took vengeance upon them for uh for making his relationship because it was a true unity of love that's what jesus was teaching Jesus never taught, Christ never taught uh, religion. He never taught all of these different denominations. That was not his teachings. Christ was in three countries at the same time. I've been to Spain. I've seen the uh, statues that they've carved of him. I've been to India. And the exact same time he was there, he was in Spain and carved these uh these images of christ at the same time saying he was there at the same time only god could do that only god is omnipotent and omnipresent so think what you want but god doesn't care about race he does not like racism and he's proven that by scripture by punishing those who go against it who think that it's right to you know steal people's identities judge people by their skin color God doesn't like that and, and, and a true god would not a true god of pure love and light would never like that he would never that hurts him you know he wants to teach and even even with the extra biblical non canonical text it's hard to say that when you're talking about the apocryphal text you know christ taught a lot of things but he also learned from people people talk about this time span where he wasn't around he was around but he was teaching and learning at the same time and one of the things that he taught in these texts that you will not find in your Bible is uh, and this is funny because Christ said this over 2,000 years ago and just I, I want to say 1995 somewhere around there we discovered that our hearts have a brain it's called the heart brain it actually has more synapses than our actual brain so Christ said when heart and mind are one, you can move mountains. People took that as a metaphor. It's not a metaphor. It is not a metaphor. I can do things that people would think are impossible. But it's because I'm in touch. Uh, I, I, I can't explain why. My experiences led me to be able to do this but i'm not the only one there's people out there like me 
that can do certain things <laughs> that will actually seem to be impossible. And I'm not talking about, you know, little tricks or feats. I'm talking about, you know, something that you would think no human can do. I have the ability to do those certain things, and so do many other people. <laughs> or so does many other people. So, just know that there's a greater force out there. And Christ consciousness, Christ never taught segregation. He never taught denomination. He was teaching you that everything is within you. That was one of the major points of him coming down. You know, so I, I don't want to get into, you know, like a religious or a biblical discussion. Saying I, I took theology, and even when I took theology, I saw massive issues within theology. And when I would, when I would uh, challenge those issues that I saw, you know, I was told, well, everybody knows that, but just go with it. Well, no, I'm not going to just go with it, because I'm on a path to seek out the truth. I want to know the truth. If you can't mentor me or point me in the direction to find that truth, I'll go find it on my own, which is what I did. Sorry, I, I apologize for the rant. I just had to get that through before. I don't know where this is going. Like I said, I haven't seen this. So I apologize for the rant. I just wanted to get that out there because, you know, you have to be careful of what you take heed to. Know the image of your Messiah, but this is literally nothing. I'm going to go so much deeper into this tomorrow, family. Make sure if you want this information, comment below. Go deeper. Pause. <laughs> and if you can't wait tomorrow, you want more information on this. The book goes into detail about this and explains all this. The book called Fams. You don't. You shouldn't be paying a nine, living a nine to five, paying rent, paying mortgages. There's a book that shows you how to get out of that and breaks everything I was just saying down. The free version is the audio version, and that is in a link at the top of the page. And then there's the physical copy that should be right around this area. Um, listen, we got to get this information out. I love you all. Peace. You have no idea. Do you know who that is, what that is, and what that has to do with the end of the world? If you don't believe in the Antichrist, and I don't have a religion, you will by the end of this video. This man existed. This is a real person right here. This is the spiritual, symbolic representation for the spirit of the Antichrist on earth. Oh yeah, the Antichrist already came. The damage has already been done. The world already ended. And those who watch this video until the very end, you'll have an understanding that many people simply cannot. This is a pope, and his name is Romanus Pontifex. I'm probably mispronouncing that. But this is the pope who was the physical embodiment of his time of the white horseman. Remember, the white horseman is in Revelations. The white horseman is said to be the conqueror. The white horseman is released in the first seal. And when this being comes on the earth, you will see conquering on the earth like you've never seen before. Now, first, you got to understand what a spirit actually is. A spirit is not a ghost. A spirit is very real. First of all, I'm not saying that ghosts aren't real. Spirits are a personality or a pattern that does not need a physical embodiment in order to interact or be sensed by things around it. That's why you hear people say school spirit. Or you say that somebody's spirit is still here. I can feel your spirit in the room even when you're not. Or I felt the absence of your spirit. Archetypes are spirit. That's why you see certain entities and characters always coming up in every single story. You Archetype. Archetype. Not archetype. Read. But I digress. Not the Catholics, but the elites within the Catholic Church were the embodiment of the Antichrist. 
and they were the embodiment of the white horseman. Let me break this down. The white horseman was always supposed to be the Antichrist. If you read Revelations, you can tell. The white horseman conquers the world in a way that's never been conquered before. And the Antichrist acts like he's Christ, and he comes in the name of Christ, though he is not. This Pope was the one who sanctioned colonialism and slavery worldwide, not just of black people, of all people. And can you guess what was the name of the first slave ship? I want you to write that below and it will all make sense to you. And when these Catholics came to get in to enslave people, they came and said that they come in the name of Christ and that they are here to bring you to heaven and they will put them in ships and take them to slavery. It gets deeper. Who were the people who killed Christ? The Romans, right? Who were the people who adopted the story of Christ to control their people? The Roman Empire, right? That happened with the Council of Nicaea. Go look it up. Who changed their entire image, right? Who claimed to no longer be a, a nation of kings, but instead of Christ figures, who used Christianity to conquer the world. That was the Catholic Church, people. Come on, know your history. Has there ever been a time where a small group of people have conquered the entire planet? The entire elite Western body conquered the entire planet under the name of Christ? That is the job of the White Horseman. There's a book that breaks this down even better. It's called Bam. Food, forest, foraging, hunting, anti-fragile, modern society. You'll see it right here. Um, but there's also a free version. It's the audio version. It's in a link at the top of the page. By page 40 in the book, you'll have a full understanding of what I'm talking about. But the book is actually bigger than that. You have to understand that the matrix, the medium or structure in which you develop in the shadow matrix, the great devourer, Babylon, is what you live in today. You don't need, I don't have a religion, by the way. I'm not here to make you believe in Christianity, Islam, Judaism, any of that. I'm just here to give you the truth and give you a way out the matrix. This book shows you the way out the matrix and back to the Garden of Eden. We're meant to be technologically advanced hunter-gatherers, fully one with nature and God. But they have brainwashed you about hunter-gatherers, not telling you that hunter-gatherers are the one who created the Amazon rainforest. They don't tell you that they're the people who build some of those ancient monuments that you look at. They don't tell you that these people are way healthier than us. They don't tell you that they have an almost 0% depression rate, pretty much zero. They don't tell you that these people are living well beyond 80 years old. Why don't they tell you? Because hunter-gatherers are completely independent. And this system, this matrix needs you to depend on it, needs you to work those jobs that you hate working, paying this mortgage, the rent. It does not want you to be free, but this book allows you to get that freedom. Again, the free version is the audio version. It's in the link at the top of the page. Or the physical copy is right here. I love you all. Peace. You have no idea. So, I think he was... I think he was slightly off on a lot of what he was saying. I'm not trying to knock him at all. It's a process. Everybody has to go through the process. You've got to go through your own steps. And I won thousand percent wholehearted free Vatican but as we've been in our seventh seal now so you've got seven seals for reference. we've been in our seventh seal got out of our sixth sixth seal between the late 70s and 80s now we're on our seventh seal so you know things are getting serious but you have to do research because all of these topics come together talking about extraterrestrial talking about christ consciousness talking about auras biome orgone energy talking about metaphysics esotericism all of these things uh want to be specific on what you say because you can lead somebody down the path just like if you take somebody that's brand new to all of this and you force not force you make them fast 
you know they they want to get to where you are so tell them first of all fast clean your body out then you teach them medit meditation techniques then you decalcify that pineal gland well if they don't have the foundation built up in themselves to understand what's going on when they make those changes it can drive a person mad it has driven many people mad and and you know shout out to uh who was it uh nut nut gin shout out to you for giving me your testimony and about you know everything that you've gone through because I myself have done shadow work. Shadow work is another thing. Uh, shadow work is probably the most difficult thing you will ever do in your life. Because if you are not conscious and aware of yourself for a long time, then by the time you get to shadow work and you start doing it, it's going to bring down this big black hole. Many people do not make it out of there. So if you do make it out of there, good on you. Kudos to you. Because that is a huge, huge accomplishment. That is a absolutely magnanimous accomplishment. But back to this. We've got so much going on now. That the distractions are trying to keep us thinking the way they want us to think. You know? Go to school, teach us everything about nothing. Make it to where we need eight hours of sleep, and then we work eight hours, and then we have, what, eight hours to do anything else. So they want us as workers, not as thinkers. The problem with that is... We know better now. We've known better. Now we can do something about it. And we're waking up. Everyone is waking up. It's such a tremendous, beautiful thing. It is an absolutely beautiful thing. I cannot tell you how many times my soul has just completely lit up with light and joy. And I see someone taking the small steps to light to to light up because they're starting to comprehend, you know, and, and it can be detrimental in the beginning because it flips your entire paradigm for whatever your belief system is upside down. It just it's gone. You know? Because these were all put into place to control you. But once you learn the truth, you take that truth and you feel different, you walk differently. It would be akin to a Christian saying that they're walking with the Holy Spirit or walking with God. You feel differently, act differently, think differently. Because now you're in this space to where you're questioning everything. But not only that, you have the resources to question it. Find those answers and it's not always in a book you know it, it's in a book but it's also personal experience we are all an accumulation of our own experiences we cannot get past that and source you'll hear people say source we're all one I'm talking to you I'm talking to me all one just experiencing this thing called existence in life in this body we are not this body and like you said energy at this is scientific i know this every scientist knows this energy cannot be uh unalived energy can only be transformed into another type of energy but you cannot get rid of energy so that means all of the energy that has always been on this earth is on this earth. All of the energy that's ever been here is here. Now, whether that energy went to a realm right next to ours or not, 
That's a different story. All of the energy in the universe is still there. It's not gone anywhere. It may transform. It does transform. And it may turn to something that you don't recognize. But if it was for you to recognize, it will become recognizable. I'm going to stop talking because I, I can go. I'm, I'm going to let him talk. I apologize, but I just wanted to throw a few bits of information in there before. I, I just don't want you to be led astray by hearing a few good things from somebody and they say, oh, well, this is the way. There's so much more to it. There's so much more. And, and we're in this together because we are one. All one. Just remember that. All one. It's all love. I just want us to have the right tools for the job. That's all. Do you know who that is? What that is? Yeah, bro. Are you recording this? What's going on? All the lights, the traffic lights is out too. Oh my god. Yo. What is going on? Yo, that's just whoa. What? Yo, they about to the people who run our society consider themselves gods, and that's Boy, why they're they not do. explaining. They think they're more than human. Oh, obviously. Yeah, they. I. I go. They're not even human because humans care about their environment of and course. their neighbors, and humans uh, care about you know other people's children of course and humans care about living things yes but they don't do any of that and he goes because they think they're more than human oh i noticed they That's think why they they're want to live royals forever. they think they're like royals in in a rarefied sphere of dna or something above us like did they come from another planet uh, you know, when I you hear people talk, I can't either, but... This is the podcast to speculate on it, though. Well, because some Feel people, free. some people say, you know, a lot of religious people, they're into some deep rabbit holes of things, and I don't know anything. Well, you can see where they are, though. I mean, I, speaking for myself, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know if this is the Nephilim, right? I was going to say. I don't know. I know. Here we go. That's what I said. No, no. I'm, what I, no let me just say. Heard. I said You're I fine. don't know right. anything I about that stuff, okay? She I'm does. a very ordinary <laughs> middle-aged man who spent his life following politics and right. theology. But I do know that whatever's going on is very deep. Yeah. I've spent my whole life around politicians and seen decisions get made, interviewed people who run things. And what's happening now is qualitatively different so different that it's not in the same category at all no this is hurting people for the sake of hurting them this is lying for the sake of lying this is as the Power devil hates holy the water sake. they hate the truth you tell the truth about anything it almost doesn't matter what it's about it doesn't have to be about the next election right That's it right. can just be about the about history for example mm -hmm. right. telling the truth about history why should that offend well, anybody that really periods where everyone's dead and we can't of course change the past so there's nothing really at stake for us now right you would think people would welcome open-minded historical inquiry to get closer to what actually happened in whatever period or in whatever event. They hate that. Yes. Well, what, what are you watching? You're watching someone who hates the truth because it's true. And there's no possible profit motive that is driving that. There's no political end that is driving that. They hate the truth because it's true. Now we're in the realm of theology. The now, Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson, you guys have known him from you know, his uh, broadcast news daily, but now he has switched because he's been in that realm. He's been part of that machine that is trying to remember. There's, there's only what is it? Uh, I can't remember if it's four or eight people. It's four. Four individuals in the world own all of the news. Tucker Carlson was a major player in that. Now he switched sides. This is what I mean. What would make a man like Eben Alexander? Neuro, uh, neurosurgeon got meningitis who was atheist 
what would make someone like him come back and after his experience completely start writing books and believing in all this so-called esoteric metaphysics stuff tucker carlson same way he was in the wrong camp from the get-go but that was his road follow that was his path he had to be in that wrong camp to find out right things and go to another camp which is the side that we're on you see him talking all of the time that's a drastic these are these are not typical things people don't do this typically you don't just wake up at 48 years old or whatever age he is and say you know what everything before now that i've said was completely wrong and i didn't know and i'm sorry but now i'm trying to correct it by being on the correct path this is not an easy thing and i know you might not be able to grasp that but this is what i mean when i say you find out the truth and it flips your entire belief system your religious paradigm whatever have you upside down and does a 180. these are serious things and it's to be taken seriously this is not something to be taken lightly you know we, we can make jokes about it we we can look at the freaky and the weird stuff but these are things to be taken seriously because you look at specific people and say okay you're an expert in this field you're an expert in this field you've been a newscaster a reporter and a journalist most of your life now you've completely switched sides what would make a person do that and they're not switching to the bad side they're switching to the side of light now being in that industry as we all know which is just evil in itself you know he has seen enough to know hey i want no parts of this in fact i want to warn people about it excuse me but you know what it's great to be skeptical i encourage it i say question everything but in my honest opinion christ could come down here right now and show himself and people would be like ah that's fake that's not real it's a trick blah 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 you know but we're in a serious time we just entered into the age of aquarius the water bearer understand that and these civilizations are cyclical. So every 13 to 24,000 years, something happens, but there's a cycle. Look at the Atlanteans. Look at all of these great nations that existed, the Tartarian Empire. Look at all of these great things that existed. They're no longer here. We have no proof or evidence of what happened to them at all. We can only speculate. So, with them being so technologically advanced, taller, stronger, you know, possibly at a hand in our own uh, evolution from Homo sapien to Homo sapien sapien mixed with Neanderthal, you know, these are serious issues. Ask yourself, what would make a person make such a drastic change? It's not a joke. It's not to be taken lightly. It's not to be toyed with. This is serious stuff. And that's why I take it seriously. And I know anybody watching my channel that has done what I've done, shadow work, had these experiences, you know what I'm talking about. So 
if you don't like what I'm saying and you're offended by it or you know you're just completely put off by it that's fine it's not for you I'm talking to the people that it's for you guys understand this and you know that the one true thing that will always prevail as cheesy as it sounds I say this all the time when you look at it at face value it does seem so cheesy but unconditional love is the most powerful thing out there and unless you've stood in presence of source you have never felt that I felt that I felt that three times because I've been unalived three times once for over two hours when they said that I would come back with yeah, if I did come back I'd be a vegetable you know but I came back completely normal not by my doing you know? so understand that these are serious topics we can make fun of it we can look at the cgi we can look at the ai we can look at the the weird stuff that people put out there that are just trying to pull little bits and pieces of theories out of the air and just you know grow followers on tiktok or grow followers on youtube just to you know build a little bit of i wouldn't even call it a community i, I would just say you know a lot of people liking your stuff but when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it this is a serious issue it's big and it's happening now a lot of people think that our planet was destroyed in 2008 or 2012 those are the two times all by CERN I've had a couple of theories I've said we either are being gaslit, gaslighted to the most extreme level, or we are now in this parallel universe just right next door to where we used to be because of all of the crazy things that have happened since 2012. Just think about it. Think about where we're at. Think about 2012 and just push all of that together. That hasn't ever happened like that in my lifetime, nor my parents' or my grandparents' lifetimes. So, what do you make of it? You know, this is serious stuff. It's real stuff. Do not let it hinder you. And the whole point of why we can't understand it all the time is because we're meant to put up with this daily struggle, this daily life. You know, gotta wake up, gotta exercise, gotta shower, clothes ready, gotta go to work, gotta come home, gotta fix dinner, gotta family. All of these things distract you, but you can do them the proper way. You absolutely can. And I can tell you now, I haven't had cable in my house for over a decade. I do not watch it. I do not watch it. Now, I know a lot of people that do watch it, and then they ask me something. I have nothing to say. Why would I? You want me to engage into a discussion about what our government is doing? I already know. I've worked for them. Homeland Security, NASA, Lockheed, Northgrove. I already know what they're doing. But I'm not worried about what they're doing. I'm worried about what the big players in the background are doing. You have some people that say that, you know, like, like that one guy saying that, you know, uh, the world already ended and the Antichrist came and is here. Well, that could be true, but, and I'm not saying I put all of my faith in all of scripture because I know how corrupt the Nicene Council was. 
and I know how uh, how knowledgeable the Gnostics and the Cathars were. Cathars loved God so much that they just wanted to be with God. So they started jumping off of cliffs, unaliving themselves. Then the Roman Catholic Church made uh, unaliving yourself, I can't say the word, unaliving yourself a sin. That's when that became a sin. So that was a man-made thing. But when you think about, you know, all of the other sects together, you know, They've known all of this, and you should always learn mistake. Take heed to what they say. That's my two cents on it. And nobody's saying shit. Those are the angels. Dude, they're moving around. Yeah, that's fucking creepy, dog. What the fuck is that? It's not angels. Angels, for one, do not move like that. They do not fall out of the sky like that. That's that's it's just not angels. No. There were there were plenty of astronauts that talk about you know not just u.s astronauts i'm talking russian cosmonauts as well that were you know trying to get out of our stratosphere they said that they would see uh three to six angels that were over 50 tall just flying next to them glory flying next to them just think about that. These are scientists. These are absolutely scientific. They're saying that they see this flying next to their shuttle. So just think about that. Back of your mind. These are some short tell signs that someone has done blue heady on you. Number one. You feel suffocated, you feel restless, you feel like you just want to take off and just run anytime you're home. Someone in your life is definitely jealous and is trying to get you to leave impulsively, making the wrong decision, leading you down a path of just not good. Number two, unexplained pains in your hands, your feet, or your joints. This is someone trying to close your roads. They don't want you to progress. They don't want you to do any better. They want you to just stay where you're at, stagnant, and even go backwards. Number three, you become hot out of nowhere. And I'm talking like burning hot. Like you're just sitting there and out of nowhere, you're sweating profusely. You can't understand why you have this heat that's rising from the back of your neck all the way up. This means that someone has some type of like monument or I don't even know how to say it in English, but they essentially are using your picture with candles around it in order to wish you harm. This is why you're hot out of nowhere. Number four, nothing in your life is going right. All of the plans that you have for advancement or anything that you have planned for the future, even if it's just like little trips or vacations or all falling through, someone is definitely trying to cross your paths. And number five, you're unable to get a restful sleep. You're waking up in the middle of the night constantly. You're like pacing back and forth. You're just feeling like you literally can't even live in your own skin. That's not a good sign. Let me know if you guys want me to do a part two. I have many more signs. I think that's dangerous. That's, that's about as akin to playing with the Ouija board. Those are dangerous things. And... I grew up with people that had families that were us, which means in Spanish or uh, witches or shaman in Spanish. Uh, filthy stuff, filthy. I saw it firsthand. But 
No, uh, there's real magic. In like that's the thing. There's there's re there's real magic in this world. There's no such thing as you no know, dark magic, light magic. It's all in the intent. Your intent happens before you ever make a move. So there's real magic. There's things in this world. I personally know that because I can do certain things and it has nothing to do with any kind of ritual or anything. It's, it's just with thought. It's just because I know how to find my heart and mind. The little heart brain, or the, yeah, the little heart brain, my heart, and my heart, and my actual brain to want and do certain things. I'm not an expert at it, but I can do certain things. I refrain from showing it because I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to get snatched up by the government like they've done with so many, but I'm not the only. I can do these things. Many people can do these things. But just understand that you're using these things for negative reasons. These are dark forces. And they're also creating time. So you may have a timeline that's supposed to go like this, and then somehow you get into this and you branch off about people talking about slowing down time and all of this stuff time doesn't exist everything is now everything is now that's why it's called space time space time continuum everything is now there is no time time is something that humans use to be able to measure we have to have a measure and that's what time was created for. I don't recognize that time. For work, for my career, yeah, I recognize that time. But as far as me as a person, what's going on in the world, I do not recognize time. And I've noticed that I age about 10 to 12 years slower than most people. And I don't know if that's a combination of the fact that I take care of myself, I watch what I eat, you know, I don't eat fast food, I don't eat GMO, I don't eat processed food, I don't, you know, just a lot of things I don't eat. So, uh, but yeah, I see people my age and I'm like, 60, at least 55, 60. But here I am, you know, yeah, I do. So it's all about perception. You create your own perception. If you don't want it to exist, it does not have to. Do not have to acknowledge it. Just know that you have the power. You have so much power. You are so much more than you ever taught to understand that you are. And I just wish that you all understand how much goodness, love, and peace have with you. Because it's going to take all of us to help the situation that we are now in. Whether it's the theory that you know, blew ourselves up in 2008, or CERN blew us up in 2012, or... We're being gaslit by the government, whichever it is. I hope that you would do enough research to understand how to comprehend that. that that's my hope. So when we talk about activating your third eye and all your chakras and shit, then you start getting to your third eye, which is your pineal gland. We got to understand that this shit is not for the weak, I promise you. And then you're going to start seeing creatures like this 
and they even tell you you can't see these beings with your untrained eye until you train your goddamn eye to see on these higher dimensions. You feel what I'm saying? Which is the spiritual realm. You also can see light beings and communicate through light beings through your goddamn thoughts. You feel what I'm saying? That's how they really communicate with you. It's through the random thoughts or as we would call it downloads. They upgrading your mind and your consciousness. But we also understand that some of these beings that's coming to you are wolf and sheep's clothing. Some of these is ancient interdimensional beings that are highly fucking intelligent and can trick your ass if you are gullible. That's why it's important that if you're trying to activate your third eye and you don't know what the hell you're doing, stop trying to do shit. You don't know what you're doing. You feel what I'm saying? Or do research and be aware of the things that you're getting yourself into. Everybody's mind and spirit is not fit to activate their third eye. They might fuck around and lose their mind, for real. Up late at night, can't sleep because you see some shit in the corner type shit. Tell me, it gets real. And let me know what y'all think about this shit in the comments. Like and follow me for more wisdom. Stay tuned. I think he was spot on about that. I, I usually don't agree spot on with most of the things he says, but there's little bits of gems and you know, little little jewels in there that you should take heed to. This absolutely one thousand percent. If you do not know what you're doing, you have not done the foundation. You have not started from the bottom and built this foundation up to where. You know, after your pineal gland has been decalcified, you start to see these things. You have work to do. You have shadow work. I'm not going to go into depth about what that's at, what that is. Go look it up. But you have shadow work to do. And you're seeing things out of your peripheral vision. You need to dial that in. And understand that something's trying to toy with you and you need to move past it because it's there as a distraction as it's because it does not want you to move they do not want us to move because they know that once a certain amount of us have our powers and realize what we do it's over that's the big thing. That's the most important thing I could probably say. You're all powerful. You're so much more important. But you have to go through the steps. Don't listen to people and just go out there and start taking stuff and trying to calcif decalcify your pineal gland and just going to see beauty everywhere. No. You're going to see everything. Good and bad. But once you get onto that trail, you're only going to see what you choose to see. So if you choose to see love and light and understanding, that's what your experience will be. Choose to see the opposite of that, that's what your experience will be. You are in control. You control that. And let me say, intent, I would say, I don't want to say the most important thing as far as top five. Intent is definitely up there on top five most important things. Your intentions. Your intentions. See, I'm, I'm an empath, so I can feel people's intentions. That's one thing about me. And most people can to an extent, but to a very muted extent. They might get this gut feeling. They don't trust it yet because they haven't trained it. So they'll feel it. They'll kind of, you know, move away a bit, but then they'll still go back to it. because They haven't trained themselves to recognize what that is. I know what that is. And when I see, hear, or feel that, I back off. I go elsewhere. 
but I also zip up. When I say zip up, I mean I close myself off from any of that negative intent. And it's a, it's a proper meditation technique. It's a proper thing that I do with my spirit and my body because it's easy. It's so easy to do things when it comes to just your spirit. But you're also trying to protect your body. That's the hardest thing. Because your body is much more vulnerable than your spirit. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I didn't offend anybody by talking too much or you know, inserting my thoughts into this. But, at the end of the day, I would feel... I would feel bad and remorseful if I did not speak on where I felt, uh, on what I felt needed to be spoken. I, I would genuinely feel bad because I truly care. That that's where I'm coming, coming from a place of love and understanding. Just like I expect stupid, ignorant people to do stupid, ignorant things. So when they do those things, it does not ex upset me at all. I understand it. I can put myself in their shoes, and I can understand why they're like that. That's just one of the great gifts that I have. I don't know if it's because of being in 30 countries, speaking different languages, knowing cultures all over the world, but I'm very good at that. And I also understand idiot is being an idiot, but I also will always learn from fool's mistakes. This is all a part of my path. It's a part of everyone's path. Now, where you come out after that path, it's up to you. But we are all in this together. Just understand, please do your research. Do your research. The things that I'm talking about... Do your research because my research and my experiences has led me to this point. Yours might lead you to another point that I've never seen. And we need to discuss it because we need to know all of our options. We need to know all of the circumstances. We need to know all of the different ways that we can either act or react. And as a community, as one, that unconditional love says, hey, you know what? I don't, I'm not trying to use you, hurt you. Nothing but pure love for you. But if you've gone through the same experience that I've gone through, let's discuss it and see if we can learn from each other. That alone brings us like this. It's, a, it's so simple. It's so simple. Don't ever let them make you think that it's difficult. It's not. We are here. We are here for a reason. All of us. Just understand that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sorry if I got a bit in depth, but really, I'm not sorry because it needed to be said a lot of this needed to be said because i would feel like i did not only myself but all of you an injustice if i just stayed silent came to all this so let me know what you think you guys know i love when you comment i interact with all of you in the comments you know all of you you know that so I truly appreciate it, and let me know what you think in the comments. Had different experiences than me. If you've had other things happen, I would be honored to read what you have to say and to hear and take heed to what you have to say, because none of us are better than the others. All in this together. So. I appreciate you all, and I will definitely see you on the next one. 
Oh yeah, and do me that favor. If you like my content, if you've gotten anything from my content, smash that like, subscribe, and notification bell. Let's run the numbers up on the algorithm. Let's get this awareness out there to everyone. That is my main goal in us as a community as we're building this community together because not one of us is more important than the other. We're all important. We need to make this aware, get this awareness out there. And by smashing that like button, commenting, and definitely subscribing and watching gets that awareness out there to people, to make people aware. So I would appreciate it. I love and appreciate every last one of you that stuck with me from the beginning on our way to a thousand subs and that warms my heart more than i could even describe right now in this short video so i appreciate it i cannot tell you from the heart i appreciate it you know, it touches my soul to know that i've gotten so many great comments so that note please do that it's free it doesn't cost you a thing i'm not sponsored so i do this for free but doesn't cost you a thing all you got to do is a couple of clicks and i would definitely appreciate it see you on the next one